it's really after 67 that you begin to, we begin to see a, a dramatic growth in the number mm. of Jewish people coming to faith in Jesus as Messiah. Mm. Um, there are obviously some in, in pre-48, and there are some um, between 48 and 67, but something happened uh, in the heavenlies that God began to lift uh, this, uh, this uh, blindness, this hardness, because you've gone from uh, just a couple of dozen believers, hmm. uh, Jewish believers, in Jesus in Israel in 1948, maybe 24, 25, hmm. to 15,000 today. Is that right? And most of that accelerated post-67, and much of it is in the last 10 to 15 years. And then worldwide uh, in 67, and I was born in uh, April 67, so it was hmm. a benchmark for me, uh, you know, there were maybe 2,000 Jewish believers in Jesus on the entire planet in 1967. And now hmm. uh, there's a million or so Jewish believers. In a world of 14 million or so Jewish people, we're not nearly to all Israel being saved. But that acceleration is interesting. Sure, and, sure. It, and it comes to a point um, that I want to ask you about because, you know, you see prophecies, let's say, in uh, Ezekiel 36, 37. Uh, these are, you know, classic prophecies of the Jews being regathered to the land and Israel being reborn. But it would appear that the physical restoration of Israel is described as being prophesied as coming first, and then a second prophecy distinctly, you know, and then uh, the Lord says, and then I will breathe life, breathe life into, into these into folks. Them. So a spiritual restoration seems to trail the physical restoration. Is that, a, is that an accurate, is that way, the way you see it, is that an accurate No, I think view? that is, I, that is the way I see it. That, that is an accurate reality. I think that's, that's what the prophet is saying. The dry bones are gathered together and then life is breathed into them. We're waiting for that to happen. That's Zechariah when God initiates that. And, and, and this, this is why I am so convinced, if no other reason, that salvation is a sovereign work of God. Because in Zechariah 12, 10, when God desires to do it, the spirit of grace and supplication will come on Israel and they will mourn for the one they pierced. I think God is going to activate that. I think God activates all salvation through a regenerating work. And at any point in time, whatever is happening is the work of God. And it's clear that that work has expanded with regard to Israel, as you just pointed out historically. And the day will come when they look on the one whom they have pierced. And that will only happen when God gives them the spirit of grace, it's grace, and supplication so that they cry out and they have another view of Christ than they've ever had. I, I, just a footnote to that. Um, I, I just did a 10-part series on Isaiah 53. Um, and it, it was just a, just a, I can't even describe what an amazing experience it was. And I'll just give you a simple look at it, sort of an overview Please. look at it. Yeah. The verbs are all in the past tense, and the nouns are all plural. Um, who has believed the report given to us? To whom has the arm of the Lord been revealed? All past tense. People look at Isaiah 53 and they say, that's a prophecy of Christ's death. He was wounded for our transgressions, bruised for our iniquities, chastisement of his peace, you know, and all of that. Um, that's, that's a prophecy of the death of Christ. It isn't. It is not a prophecy of the death of Christ. It isn't looking forward to the death of Christ. It's looking backward to the death of Christ. He was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. That is a prophecy of the future salvation of Israel when they see the one they've pierced, and that will be their confession. They'll look back and say, we didn't believe the report. We didn't esteem him. We saw him, and we thought he was being smitten by God and afflicted because he was a blasphemer. And now we know he was wounded for our transgressions, bruised for our iniquities. And he goes through the whole litany of that. You know, that, that whole chapter gives us the very verbiage that Israel will speak when they look on the one they've pierced and mourned. That's what they're going to say. We didn't believe it. There was nothing about his life. There was nothing about his origin. There was nothing about uh, his person. Uh, he, he was, and then he was marred, and his death was ignominious. Ah, now we see it. So to me, Isaiah 53 just rises out of the Old Testament. If you look at Isaiah, the first 39 chapters are judgment, 
like the Old Testament. The second 27 chapters are salvation like the New Testament. If you take the second 27, the first nine are the deliverance from Babylon. The last nine, the deliverance of the earth from the curse. The middle nine, salvation for Israel. If you bore down into the middle of those nine, you're in 53. If you bore down, you're in verse 5. He was wounded for our transgressions. I mean, the whole of that chapter doesn't make any sense unless it's Israel making that confession, and then the fountain of cleansing is open to them. Subscribe to our videos by clicking the subscribe button. You'll find some videos that we've chosen specifically for you. And if this is a ministry that you'd like to support financially, just make a tax deductible donation by clicking here to visit our giving page. Thank you. We look forward to partnering with you to bless Israel and her neighbors in the name of Jesus.